What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. Today's video is going to be on public safety diving and I want to shoot this video for several reasons. One, I want to really break down what PSD diving is and, and explain it to you guys. And I also want to shoot this video kind of as a, um, a thank you to all the public servants out there. Uh, I know here recently within the last year and a half or so, there's been several PSD divers who has lost their life during call outs. Uh, Buffalo PD just recently had one uh, a young man lost his life during a training incident. And then of course, uh, in, here in our area, we actually had a PSD who lost his life during an actual operational call out. Uh, he was trying to recover a body and uh, you know, sadly, he ended up becoming the second victim uh, during that incident. But uh, I, I just want to put this out there to say thank you to all the, the public servants and PSDs out there, uh, myself included. You know, I'm, I'm right there with you guys. I know what you go through. But I wanted to talk a little bit about public safety diving to the ones that don't know much about it and just why it's so dangerous <clears throat> and why it's so important for proper training and proper equipment before you go out there and try to do something like this. So what is PSD? And I'm, I'm gonna talk two things here. I'm gonna talk about PSDs and UCIs. And what I mean by that is public safety divers and underwater criminal investigators, because here in our area, we do both. A lot of us are PSDs and UCIs as well. So what is a public safety diver? Usually it's typically somebody who works for police, fire, EMS, or maybe even the military. So they got a public service background uh, and, and a small little aspect of what they do for their job involves diving. Maybe you're diving to recover a body, recover evidence uh, off the bottom. Uh, maybe you're doing just an investigation. You're going to look to see if something's under there. Uh, it, it could be, you know, not even under the water. A lot of the stuff that we do is above the water, you know, surface water, swift water rescue, things like that. So there's many different aspects, but typically a public ser safety diver is a public servant in one of those uh, fields, if you will, who's also a diver with specialized training. And he, not only does he have specialized training, he also has specialized equipment that he uses. Now, one of the misconceptions is, well, the gear that he uses is different than other divers. And that's not necessarily true. You know, yes, we wear uh, dry suits. So do dry suit divers. Yes, we wear full face masks. So does full face mask divers. So a lot of the equipment tends to be the same. It might be um, more centered around that public safety, if you will, um, but it, it is pretty much the same equipment. It may be designed specifically for, but you know, a BC is a BC, a regs a reg. Uh, yeah, we, I know we got cold water regs and warm water regs and all that, but still it's a regulator. So the equipment in itself is not necessarily different, but the way we train to use it and, and to operate with it, that, that part is the specialized. Um, you know, we use a lot of hand signals or hand signals and diving. We use a lot of line signals when we're public safety diving, things like that. So it's someone who works for the public service and they also have specialized training in diving, not just open water up to rescue, uh, even their specialty, search and recovery, not deep, all that. They also have specialized training as far as that team-based training, like public safety uh, training, also underwater criminal investigation training, things like that. <clears throat> so that's typically what a PSD is. This can be um, anything from a police officer who has specialized training. It could be a firefighter or an EMS personnel. It could be military personnel that do this as well. Um, they don't even have to be full-time. Uh, one of the teams that I dive on, it's a, a volunteer fire department team, and they uh, were volunteer. You know, we, we don't get paid to do this. Um, we're out there answering calls when we can, when we're available. Uh, so a lot of times that's what it is. It's someone who is a public servant who's not a, I don't want to not call them professional. To me, they're professional. All public servants are professional, but it's a non-paid public servant, if you will. So a lot of times it's, it's a volunteer status. But that's what an actual PSD or UCI is. It's a public servant who has specialized dive training, specialized skills to do whatever they need to do, recover bodies, recover evidence, uh, do investigations, things like that. So why is PSD diving so much different than your, your typical recreational diving? Because we, we understand some of the skills are the same. You know, we never hold our breath. We, we clear the mass the same. Why is there specialized training um, and why is it different for for PSDs and it's simply because the environments that we're in you know we may be dealing with some cold water environments we may be in overhead environments uh, we may be recovering a body out of a cave up underneath the ice anything like that 
Um, it could be dark water or black water. Yeah, it's very similar to night diving in a lake or something like that where you don't have a lot of visibility. But when you're completely blacked out, you don't have any, we run the risk of multiple entanglement hazards because the, the equipment that we wear, uh, it, it's not necessarily set up or configured the same way, say for recreational diving or tech diving. It's set up for the purpose that we need it. So a lot of times we have those extreme entanglement hazards. We may be dealing with swift water. We may be dealing with a bunch of underwater eddies and things like that that we have to constantly be concerned with. Um, as far as communication, communication is key for public safety divers. We use lines all the time. We also have comm units on our masks, very similar to the recreational divers. They got their full face mask with the comm units on it. But we got specialized codes that we use. Uh, we constantly train and practice for these bad scenarios where we may be getting entangled or we run out of air, things like that. Um, we have very strict rules. <clears throat> Speaking about running out of air, you know, we have extremely strict rules that, you know, our teams, the teams that I dive on, uh, we have 20 minute dives. That's it, maximum. So you're in the water for 20 minutes. I don't care if you've still got a full tank. I don't care if you're only five foot deep. At the end of your 20 minutes, you're out of the water. The next team or the next diver goes in. Uh, they're strict because the extremism, if you will, of what the types of diving that we're doing it calls for that because a lot of times we only do recovery. I'm not going to say we only do recovery, but a lot of times that's what it is. It's a recovery situation. If it's still on the on the surface, if it's a, a surface water or swift water situation, then we're in that rescue mode. But once, usually, once that person goes under, by the time our team gets assembled, it's it's into recovery mode. So we're we're not. Uh, we're not feeling the rush to immediately get there, get geared up, get in the water, take care of it. We have to take time to plan this stuff out because of the extreme part of the diving that we're doing. So there's a lot of things that we have to do. We're, we're almost 99% of the time tethered so we can send uh, signals up the line. We can talk on our comm units to our comrades on top or even diver to diver underwater. So there's a lot of differences in what we do in a public uh, safety type of diving than what we do over in the recreational end. So it is very extreme. It, it does take specialized training. And, and that training, even once you're certified, we have to constantly train because the environment is constantly changing and we have to be able to adapt to that. Uh, in the last few years, I've done several body recoveries uh, in swift water, which quite frankly, I'll be honest with you, I don't like doing. Um, first of all, if it's in swift water and, and the body's submerged, the chances of them being anywhere near where they submerge is, is slim to none. Um, and we don't know what's under there because we are dealing with black water. Uh, if you put a diver in the water and they get caught in an eddy or a strainer or something like that, then you're going to have two victims there. So it, it's such an extreme type of diving. We have to constantly adapt to that environment. Uh, and the only way to do that is to train. And we train hard. We train for the worst case scenario, but we always hope for the best case scenario. Um, you know, and, and we are limited on resources. Uh, like I said, most of the teams that I die for are volunteer based. They are not paid teams. Uh, but there are paid teams out there. I don't want to say that they're not. There's several big ones here in our area, but there's also a lot of volunteer teams as well, uh, that are, sm you know, smaller based, um, teams, if you will. Uh, and, and I want to jump back just a second here. I, I mentioned earlier about it's always uh, a police, fire, or EMS personnel that's, that there are privatized um, PSD teams out there uh, that are not affiliated with a police department or a sheriff's department or a fire department or EMS or even military, but it's usually still a person who may be retired from the service or something like that, so they do have a background in it, but they are a privatized team. Uh, and I've got questions in the past about people who are wanting to start teams. How do they go about it? Um, I want to talk a little bit about a privatized team for a second. Um, if you take a law enforcement officer and he pulls a car over and he gets the subject out of the car and he arrests them, nine out of ten times when he has that car towed, he doesn't actually tow the vehicle. He calls in a private tow company, maybe on their rotation or whatnot, who comes in, tows the vehicle, takes it to the lot for them. And a, a lot of private uh, public safety dive teams are, are exactly that. 
It is a dive team who may or may not have public service background. Most of the time, I'm going to say 99% of the time they do, but they don't, they're not affiliated with the department in any way, but they have been hired or contracted through that department to do that work for them. So if they're doing an investigation or they need something recovered, they will hire or call in this contracted team to come in and do the job for them. And, and this, you know, it's not very rare to see that. This is actually more common than not. Um, and this is how it used to be way back when before public safety dive teams really took off and exploded and become big. Uh, most areas are going to have a PSD team now, but there are still those areas out there that have private teams. Um, I'll tell you, go ahead and tell you here in our area, uh, we have both. Uh, I, I own and operate a public safety dive team that is privatized for certain departments that we have contracts with, but I'm also part of a um, a department dive team. I'm actually part of several department dive teams uh, because we have mutual aid agreements, if you will, departments to, to uh, you know, department to department. So, you know, there, there's several different ways uh, you can, you know, get into the, the public safety diving, but usually you're going to have to be a public servant, work for police, fire, EMS, or military, and then have the background as a diver as well. So if it's something you're interested in, um, please seek out proper training. I can't stress this enough, guys. I'm not necessarily talking about training agencies because there's a lot of different agencies that's got a lot of good training out there. But seek out a, a good instructor. When you, if you're a firefighter, an EMS personnel, or a police officer, go to your local dive shop. If it's something they teach, uh, talk to the instructor who actually teaches the course. See what his background is. If he just teaches rescue diving, search and recovery diving, night diving, maybe dry suit and full face mask, that's great and all. But if he doesn't have a background in the public service, he's just reading straight out of a manual, going over slides on the board, he may not be your best option. So if it's something you want to get into, you want to get that training, make sure you seek out the proper instructor. There's a ton of us out there, guys, that teach this. I'm telling you right now, there's ones of us that are good, there's ones of us that are bad. Uh, I, I'm going to go out on the line and say that the good ones are your public servants, whether they do, do it by trade or they've retired from it or they do it part time. Uh, the bad ones, you know, guys, a little industry secret here. It's not hard to get an instructor certification in certain fields. Uh, you know, papers can be documented. Um, it happens, guys. I've seen it. But please make sure you interview your instructor to make sure you're getting the best quality of training and make sure he has a background in that area. I, you know, I, even me being an instructor, I still take scuba training courses all the time and, and I seek out the right instructor. You know, I, I got friends who are instructors who I take training from and then I got other friends that I take other training from them instead of the first friend simply because I don't, I don't believe there's that one perfect instructor out there. There's always going to be somebody better. So seek out the right instructor before you uh, take on this, this type of diving. But uh, if you've got any questions on public safety diving, uh, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer it the best that I can, or I'll direct you in the right direction. Uh, guys, I've got a ton of resources I can give you out there uh, to, to you know research, see if this is something you want to do. Um, if you are getting into public safety diving, go ahead and, and put this into your, your brain up there that you're probably going to have to join a team if you're not meaning a fire department or a police department or something like that if you're not already in the public service. Uh, even with the, the private dive teams, most of them are probably going to require you to have a public service background. But that's okay. You know, you're getting uh, a training across a wide spectrum of things because uh, a lot of times we don't necessarily go underwater. Like I said, sometimes we do that surface water that swift water rescue as well so um, and just understand you're going to have to wear multiple hats getting into it you're probably not going to be the primary diver you probably won't even be the backup diver you're probably going to start out as a line tender or something of that sort and then work your way up through uh, the ranks get you as much ex experience as you can because this ain't fun guys it may look cool we may wear really neat equipment sometimes but it's not fun I I've never uh, really enjoyed recovering a body, especially a kid, uh, from, from a body of water, whether it was the lake, the ocean, or a pond, or even swimming pools. I've, I've got people out of swimming pools before. It's not fun, guys. It's not something that I, I thoroughly enjoy. Um, I, 
I have a lot of respect for the public service. Uh, guys, if you're not in it, you just don't understand what we go through sometimes. The things that we see, um, it, it's, it's just not fun. It really isn't. We do it because we care. Uh, we want to help our community. We want to provide a service to our community. Um, and, and we do train for it. Um, there's, like I said, there's good training and bad training out there. But it, it's not always fun, guys. Like I said, it's not something I, I don't... I take enjoyment that that what I do I'm very good at and, and I train hard so that I can be good at it so that I can provide that service to my community and surrounding communities but it, it you know it's not something that I I want to do every day I don't wake up in the morning and say I want to go get that dead body off the bottom of the lake you know it's, it's nothing like that at all it's just something that I happen to do it's something that a lot of guys happen to do and and we are good at what we do but you know we have to train for it so guys I really appreciate you watching this video like I said if you got any questions on public safety diving please put it down in the comment section below I'll try to answer your questions as quickly and as thoroughly as I can if I can I will direct you in the right uh, area or direct you to the right person who can answer that question but guys I really appreciate you liking the video if you like it hit that like button lets me know that you want to see more content like this and as always make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter like us on Facebook pin us on Pinterest subscribe to us here on YouTube and as always guys we appreciate your business